In front of the Messe Frankfurt, um, home to numerous trade fairs, um, is a um, tall 21-meter version of the sculpture Hammering Man by US American artist uh, Jonathan Borowski. Um, th there's a motor attached that um, causes the sculptor's arm to slowly swing the hammer back and forth. Um, according to the artist, this is a symbol of work and um, of the worker. Um, now, when I was preparing for this talk, I couldn't help but wonder what would be a depiction of the workplace and of the worker 10 years from now, or maybe 20 years or 30 or 50 even. Um, technologies such as digitalization, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, they are fundamentally changing the way we work. How are they changing the workplace? How are they changing the way we work? What kind of potential do they hold? These are the questions that we want to answer today. This is the DWIH Coffee Talk. I'm your host, Axel Karpenstein. And it's my great pleasure today to welcome representatives from four German-Japanese research networks related to the future of work campaign of the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Now, this is also a great opportunity to learn about international research cooperation, given um, the guests that are involved in our talk today. Um, so we will um, also use the second half of our talk to have our guests report about their experiences uh, um, working internationally. If you um, are interested in the networks, if you want to know more about them, if you want to get in touch with their members, um, you can check out the event information on our website. You will find links there and the contact information for all the networks. Now, um, if you uh, want to participate in our talk um, on our website, there's also a link um, to this website Slido. You can post your questions there and I will try to integrate them in turn in our talk. Um, now, why, while our guests are still getting comfortable and um, getting their coffee, um, before we introduce them, um, today with us is also Ms. Mergele from the DLR Project Manage Management Agency in Bonn, Germany. Uh, the DLR manages the Future of Work campaign. Um, Ms. Mergele, thank you very much for being with us today. Hello, thank you. So first of all, uh, hello, uh, good morning to our listeners in Germany and uh, good afternoon to our listeners in Japan. Uh, I would like to present uh, you really briefly the uh, Future of Work campaign, which is a two-year international research marketing initiative, which is funded by the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research and was launched uh, two years ago in 2019. So this marketing campaign is making um, around about 2 million euros available to support 10 uh, research networks from Germany, which originate from renowned university, but also from non-university research institutions and from parties in the private sector. And in order to bring these networks together with colleagues in three countries, and uh, these target countries are Japan, uh, the United States of America, and France. So um, the research interests of these networks cover really a wide range of topics uh, in this field of the future of work, such as in this case, the participatory design of robotics for elderly care, but also the challenges for small and medium-sized businesses uh, they're facing in the transition to digitalization. And today's coffee talk includes a total of four of our 10 networks that work very actively with partner institution, institutions in Japan. And we are very happy that we have some of these colleagues here today in the coffee talk also present. And um, yeah, we are very pleased that experts from these four uh, networks have the opportunity to present their re research results here today as part of the coffee talk and uh, also they will explain opportunities maybe for you to join them in their research um, activities. 
And um, I really would like to thank the German Center for Research and Innovation Tokyo, and especially you, Mr. Kappenstein, for this opportunity. And it's really nice that we had the, the chance to, to join um, your um, series of coffee talks you, you started recently, I think last month. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to an inspiring discussion about this uh, international research collaboration and would like to give the mic back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, much for joining us today. Uh, I believe you recently already um, had a talk um, with our sister organization, the uh, DWH New York. Um, I think we, we placed different accents today. So perhaps there are also some viewers um, who participated, um, I think it was two weeks ago, actually. Um, yeah. But we'll touch about some some uh, additional issues. I'm also very excited. Um, you mentioned there are ten different research networks, four of which um, focus on Japan. That is actually quite impressive, and that um, also gives us an interesting ground, I think, to examine um, the different the different setups in Germany and Japan today. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Mergele. Um, I think all our guests are ready now. They've um, got their coffee from the coffee vendor. So let me introduce them to you. With us today are Professor Dr. Nils Madeja of the University of Applied Sciences, Mittelhessen in Germany. He represents the Digital Manufacturing Research Initiative, um, or in short, um, DigiMari, which researches and supports the digital transformation of companies and especially small and medium uh, size. Ich bin in Veranstaltung, aber ich bin dafür nicht verantwortlich, deswegen nicht zwar bei mir im Team, aber. Yes. I think, yes, okay, we have here somebody who is joining but doesn't really belong here. <laughs> Very sorry for that. Um, so we have Dr. Nils Madeja with us. Um, hello, Mr. Madeja. Um, we are, it's a pleasure that you uh, could make it today. Um, from the um, research network, the German Research Ambassadors Network for Industrial Technology and Divers, um, or in short, Granite, um, we have um, two members uh, here today, Ms. Sabine Ganter-Richter of Lyo Group International and Georg K. Löhr of NRW Global Business Japan. And thanks to you two for being with us today. Um, the coffee is, we had to grab a couple of chairs. The, uh, our virtual cafe is getting crowded, but um, we have a very interesting group with us. Um, now joining us um, from the Saitama City Foundation for, the business, uh, for business creation is Mr. Tetsuya Sasaki and also Mr. Michael Hechtel of the University Erlangen Nuremberg in Germany. They both represent the research network um, Japanese-German Mechatronics Joint Initiative, or MeJoin in, in short. And last but not least, um, also joining today is Professor Dr. Yasuyuki Taki of Tohoku University and Dr. Rainer Wieching of the University of Siegen. They both represent the so-called um, participatory, uh, participatory design in robotics for elderly care of Padero. And thanks to you too for joining us today. Um, it's, it's so great to um, have you all with us today, today because we can cover different aspects of the future of work. Um, maybe um, I can start with the following question. Now, when I was preparing for this talk, I was thinking back uh, when I was little um, and there were these popular TV programs that you might remember, like the Jetsons, they would depict a future where we can all sit back um, and let the robots and technology do all the work. Um, so my first question to you would be, is, is this where we are heading? Is this the future of work? Mr. Wieching, yes. Yeah, uh, I would say in our case, uh, where we are dealing with a very sensitive field of work, which is elderly care, we can state a clear no, because in elderly care, the warm hand is of important importance and not so much the cold hand, but there are opportunities for supporting the care workers by technologies, of course, but the human factor is always of utmost importance, at least in our field. Yeah. 
I, I, I very much like uh, the phrase that you used, the, the warm hand and the cold hand. And uh, you said um, it would basically um, be a, um, a, a symbiosis of sorts um, that um, technology assists. Um, I don't know about the others. Would you share this view? Um, is this, yeah, for some idea? Um, I do, uh, but also, but from a little different perspective, I would believe. Um, well, you asked, will robots and technology do all the work? Uh, there, I would, of course, say, uh, no, not all the work, uh, but a lot of the work, and that's already um, actually happening in the background. Uh, and uh, there, I would agree, it, it depends on really how technology is being how, how it is perceived and how in, intrusive it is in our lives. So a lot of things may already happen in the backgrounds, algorithms, uh, preparing decisions uh, and uh, running automatically. Uh, while it is also important to give humans the warm hand, uh, as my colleague here just said, um, some work will be left a lot of, of the work will also be left uh, for humans to do. Plus, let us not forget with the automation that is going on, on the one hand, new opportunities uh, will come up for humans, for human work. Um, yeah, and, and new types of work um, will come into being on the other hand. Um, so, to a certain extent, unfortunately, um, humans will still need to be doing some of the work uh, in the future. The interesting question is, what kind of work is this going to be? I think that's, that's a very central um, um, question indeed. And uh, if, if I understood you correctly, it's, uh, it's really a transition of, uh, to, towards a different kind of workplace and towards different kinds of work which we um, might explore more in greater detail today. Definitely, yes. And then we will have the discussion about repetitive work uh, being replaced and uh, freeing up uh, human capacity for creative uh, work, you know, those intelligent tasks, non-repetitive uh, and creative tasks and so on. And we see this um, yeah, actually in many sectors um, also in quite, I would say, traditional sectors, which is very interesting. Yeah. And which we're doing our research on. This is very interesting. Would you say that, um, are, are we really f approaching a fundamentally different um, phase of working and, and the workplace? Or are we witnessing just a, um, the, the, uh, the sort of the continuation of changes that have already been taking place for a long time? Mm -hmm. I would say it's a gradual transition. Um, yeah, it's a gradual transition that is going on. Um, sometimes uh, you have um, maybe phases of stronger change as we have been experiencing over the last, I would say over the last year or so with the Corona shock. Um, the, well, the, the, the shift or the push that uh, digitization has um, experienced or has been experiencing. Um, but really, if you look at it uh, over the years and decades, it's a, um, yeah, it's a gradual transition that you see. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, one, one quick remark. Um, we got some um, feedback from our viewers that I think the Japanese language um, YouTube channel isn't broadcasting correctly. We um, sincerely apolo uh, apologize for the inconveniences and um, we, we're trying to fix it momentarily. Um, perhaps you, you can uh, watch through the uh, English language channel in the meantime, if that's uh, right with you. Um, now, Professor Medea, since you already um, started, um, I remember um, a couple of years ago, the British publication, The Economist, um, um, had an interesting um, phrase. They, they said, um, manufacturers must learn to behave more like tech firms. Now, um, in, in your line of research, you deal a lot with um, manufacturing small and medium-sized enterprises. Um, the, the sentence uh, that The Economist stated, is that something that you, you would subscribe to, that you would agree with? 
Definitely, yes. Um, this uh, resonates uh, with, well with, with me or with us, our, our research network. Um, maybe it, it makes sense to clarify what, it, what a tech company is or what is meant by a tech company in this context. And the, the way I would um, explain this is a company that is driven by data and information uh, products and, and also, um, well, yeah, by uh, the, the use of information technology um, mostly. And um, well, for companies that are like traditional manufacturers or traditional uh, production companies that might not seem to be so obvious, uh, but actually um, we have seen this uh, proposal uh, or being made to yeah, quite a large variety of, of different uh, industries. Yeah, it, it starts even with um, yeah with um, producers of sports apparel. Um, if if you take a, a big manufacturer of sports shoes, for example, they themselves say, "Well, we don't we, we do no longer see us as a manufacturer of sporting goods, but we see ourselves as as a tech company, because there are so many." decisions that need to be made and um, we need to deliver our products uh, it, uh, to the market with in such a speed that you know we cannot cannot have there's no other way uh, um, to handle this than than being as fast and agile as a tech company and um, I would argue that pretty much the same applies or more and more applies to tra um, traditional manufacturers of products, components and subsystems uh, in, the, uh, in the industrial or in the uh, yeah, traditional mechanical engineering sector. Yeah. So what, what you're saying is really that that um, companies have to face a, a, a true transition, right? They're, they're not just um, using new technologies to assist in their and manufacturing basically the same things they've been manufacturing all along, but they're really branching out into, into a different type of business model. Is that Def so? Yeah. Definitely, yes. Um, I would like to point out that if we talk about uh, technologies in a broad sense, uh, it's, it's worth noting that many of the established uh, yeah, manufacturing companies, in, especially SMEs, they are also they are already very very good they're excellent at what they're doing i mean if i look uh, out of my window here i see uh, germany's optical valley uh, we have many world market leaders here so in terms of technology manufacturing technology they are excellent at what they're doing um same the same holds true for uh, our japanese partners here in our project now the key is Many of those technologies are production technologies and technologies related to making physical products, making things, monozokuri. And now these companies here, well, obviously the future is data driven. The future depends on information products and building, the future depends on building services based on mm -hmm. these data products. And they ask themselves, well, what is that supposed to be? Hmm. And that's where the challenge comes in. We need yeah. to find answers to that and come um, up with inf information goods. Let, let me uh, pick you up on the, the topic of SMEs. Um, actually, in the, in the background, my, my con colleague just said, um, as for the Japanese language uh, YouTube channel, we had to switch to a different channel. If you check um, our Slido link, uh, you will find the, uh, the new link there uh, momentarily. Um, Mr. Tetsuya, um, you, you're joining from the uh, Saitama business, uh, from, from the Saitama Corporation for the um, uh, Sport of Businesses. Um, I noticed um, when I read through um, different, um, the, the different research um, descriptions that um, a lot of work focuses um, on um, small and medium sized enterprises. Um, so I was wondering, um, what are the, the particular challenges that small and medium-sized enterprises face as opposed to larger companies? And also maybe um, given your unique position that you work a lot with Japanese companies, what, what kind of challenges do Japanese 
SMEs share with German SMEs and what kind of challenges are unique? Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm Sasaki from the Saitama City Foundation for Business Creation. In Japan, there are uh, the 99.7 percent of corporations are small and medium enterprises, and number of employees, 70 percent of all the workforce, are working for small and medium enterprises. On the other hand, looking at the value added, added value. 53% of the values added by corporations come from small and medium enterprises. So the number of small and medium enterprises is large, but looking at the added value, it's not high. So the efficiency of the production and the added value needs to be improved. That is the challenge of Japanese SMEs. And one of the triggers for achieving that is how to utilize technologies in small and medium enterprises. The Japanese SMEs are also facing the challenge of transitioning into digitalization. In that sense, I think that the Japanese SMEs are similar to German SMEs. Uh, there was a mention that manufacturers need to behave like tech firms. So manufacturers cannot survive if they only continue to uh, manufacture items, especially when it comes to Japanese SMEs. They will have a, a hard time surviving if they only stick to manufacturing. But I'm not saying that um, they should abandon monozukuri, the manufacturing of um, physical products, but we have to add technology to that to try to create add value to the products. So. Um, um, this um, project um, uh, that um, we have taken up in MeJoin, um, one example, I'd like to share my screen with you. This is one example of what we're doing at MeJoin. Can you see the screen? Um, can you see my slide? Yes. Well, um, uh, this is the inst with um, InstaNext and YS Kogyo uh, in uh, Tasaitama have entered into this joint project. YS Kogyo Sho, and this is a Saitama based company. And um, they uh, have incorporated the deep learning technology algorithm of Instronext in carrying out the inspection tests uh, that YS Eko Yosho is doing. So this is a joint project between you and Germany and Japan. And uh, proof of concept has ended um, already quite recently. And uh, we had the pandemic, um, and it was difficult for the people to travel to each other's country. But um, online, um, they were able to do the POC. Now, um, this Why is a Kogyo Show in Saitama uh, will uh, try to deploy this system here in Japan. And um, as has been mentioned, um, the Japanese manufacturing um, and has to transform into an IT company. I think this is one example of such a transformation taking place here in Japan. And from a macroscopic point of view, um, the Japanese government's policy, METI, uh, this year, is supporting entrepreneurship and has allocated a one trillion yen budget for this. And uh, if companies opt to enter into new domain, new business, or transfer to different industry sectors or do M&A, the government will support such initiatives so as to rebuild the industry. And digitization, digital transformation will be key to bringing about this transformation. I think um, that this is the situation here. Now, as has been said, um, um, we have to create value added, and we have to uh, um, introduce new capabilities and AI, deep learning, machine learning, such data, um, the processing of ju not just massive data, but in addition to that, we have to gain insight uh, through the data. And this is what is required today. Um, and these th things that we thought were irrelevant turn out to have some relevance, or we could find some causation that we did not know in the past. And this could lead to rebuilding businesses and creating new businesses. For SMEs in particular, I think this will be a strong weapon. And using a, 
um, these technologies, I think that we will see a difference between SMEs, which are keen to incorporate technologies and others not. They'll be the winners and losers. You said the digital transformation is a, uh, I don't know if the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the translator uses the same term, but you described in Japanese as a, uh, a, a large weapon or a strong weapon for small and medium-sized enterprises. Um, I, uh, y your colleague, uh, Mr. Hechtel, told me that uh, in German, you, you conducted a, a survey among uh, corporations um, on attitudes towards artificial intelligence. And uh, I think one result of the, one outcome of the survey was that there is um, maybe not exactly strong opposition, but that um, quite a large amount of um, SMEs are hesitant. To, to pick up new technologies um, to um, either they're constrained or they, they are sort of reluctant or they're not quite sure what the potential or the uh, the benefits, uh, the merits would be. Um, would you say that in, in Japan, the situation is similar, that uh, a lot of SMEs um, are hesitant to approach sort of this digital transformation? Yes. Can I answer? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, so it's a question to me. Yes. Um, especially for the Japanese um, SMEs, um, the manpower um, is the problem. Um, so IT literacy is an area where the Japanese are quite weak. And uh, therefore, when it comes to new technology like AI, um, and utilization of AI, I think uh, this will be a major challenge uh, for the people um, working at SMEs. With us today is also Ms. Gunther Richter. Um, you represent the, the um, research network Granite. Um, and uh, the research network, as I understand it, places a, uh, a great deal of emphasis on um, creating international networks, sustainable networks. Um, among different actors, um, between corporations, research institutions, um, the government, local administration, um, both in Germany and Japan. Um, now, I'm, uh, I'd like to ask you, what, what kind of role do these networks play? Um, how do they help firms um, with the task of digital transformation? How do they assist them? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, the task of digital transformation is really a long term and for all people in any country, an extremely challenging task. And not to forget, it costs a lot of money. So careful consideration of many relevant aspects um, is necessary. And no one wants to uh, take this challenge alone. So what do you do in a situation like this? You are looking for partners, reliable partners you can trust and partnerships where you can share experiences and uh, learn from each other. And since Japan and Germany are home to very skilled and experienced engineers, I may cite a German saying, which says in German, du brauchst das Rad nicht zweimal zu erfinden. So in English, you do not need to reinvent the wheel. In this year, we are com commemorating 160 years of diplomatic relations between Japan and Germany. So I think our two countries know very well how to establish reliable partnerships. However, the question remains how to connect our SMEs and also public administration in a feasible way uh, that allows to develop uh, viable solutions and uh, lead to, to success stories. So when we are talking about uh, digital transformation today, of course, we also need technology transfer. And here's where the universities and the research institutes come in. They develop digital solutions and furthermore have plenty of international connections. With our granite partners in Kagawa and Nagano prefecture and also in, in Ota city, we put these three elements together, reliable partnerships, successful solutions and international connections. So our Granite Network is offering opportunities to hand over international connections from the universities and research institutes to the local SMEs and also to public administration offices. So um, to say, well, 
I think uh, we create opportunities for discussing about digital transformation and we initiate bilateral cooperation and exchange for both for SMEs, for public administration, as well as the research institutes. And by doing so, Granit is creating and supporting success stories. And I think this is what we need in these days. Yeah. You, you mentioned, or you touched upon a, a very important topic, the, the topic of knowledge transfer, and, and you also mentioned technology um, transfer. Um, now, against the background that uh, maybe companies are hesitant to approach a, 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 a big issue such as digital transformation, an issue that is difficult yeah. to um, implement, that's costly, um, it would seem that maybe the... Um, the exchange of knowledge and the um, opportunities offered by connecting with other companies would, would sort of lower this hurdle and help them through the process. Am I, am I right there with my, with my hinge? Yes, <laughs> yes that's uh, completely true. I, I agree with you. So uh, what we did in, in the past, uh, not only during Granite time, but also before that, we, we started to establish our partnerships and We, we met frequently, we visited each other in Japan as well as here in Germany. Uh, the colleagues came over and Granite was a sort of uh, frame, also financially supported frame um, to, to, to channelize um, all our, uh, our endeavors and our challenges. So we are very uh, grateful for the, the kind support of um, of the Federal Ministry for Research that really um, helps us opening doors in Japan uh, and building also a basis of, of, of trust and yes, uh, reliability. Um, and this lowers the hurdles in the end. So talking to each other, exchanging each other and meeting also on, on digital means these days where traveling is not, not uh, possible. So we try to keep in touch and we intensify our, our contact. And yes, that's yeah. the way you do it. We are people. We are acting with each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But by now we've all you become used to, to online conferences. Um, it does offer the, the opportunity of connecting very easily. Although sometimes it's, it's a pity that uh, you can't really connect directly uh, on site. Um, um, now we, We've already presented from different research networks. We had the Digimari project, um, Professor Madeya, which focuses on the digital transformation um, of especially um, manufacturing SMEs. Um, we um, had the MeJoin initiative, Mr. Sasaki, Mr. Hechtel, um, which focuses on uh, mechatronics um, and um, also the exchange of technological market know-how. Um, Skanta Richter, she just um, talked about the establishment of innovative um, networks to connect companies, research institutions, and um, local and national administration. Um, we have a fourth network, which I personally find particularly interesting, um, which the, the Padero network, which focuses on the issue of social robotics in elderly care, uh, with elderly care, of course, being a topic that is both important to Germany and Japan and uh, many industrialized societies. Um, Dr. Wiesing, if I may ask you the question, um, now the... Um, you're, you're focusing um, also very strongly um, on implementing new technologies such as robotics. Um, um, how can, and how can um, from, from your experiences, how can these technologies contribute to implementing solutions um, for the problems that our societies are facing these days? Yeah, I would say that everything is about supporting the human work in that sensitive uh, field of work. And uh, this is the elderly care and social robotics can support the work of the caregivers because we all know that uh, we have not enough human caregivers, especially if we look into the future. And it is always then about to identify where are the real needs of the people during the work and also of the seniors. So, And that is what we want to do in our network, or we did it already with several studies, 
in Germany and in Japan, where we try to introduce the robotic system into the real life of the people inside the care facilities. And we have to learn uh, what are the procedures, what are the needs of the people, because the elderly are so different. And what we have learned is if we use participatory design paradigms that we ask the people, what would you like and where are your interests, uh, that that could work. And we did that in several care facilities in Germany and also in Japan, where we uh, put then this knowledge and interests of the persons themselves into the robotic solutions with small prototypes, for example, to facilitate fall prevention and also other activities. If you think during the night when two persons are in a care facility with 100 inhabitants, uh, how to deal with wandering, for example, based on dementia. Such a PEPA robot, for example, could then uh, identify the persons, try to talk to them and uh, alert uh, the care persons. And also when we think about the pandemic where in the last year all those social activities were cut off by the uh, quarantine aspects, uh, we could send in a pepper robot to facilitate uh, fall prevention, for example. And that worked. There was an acceptance if we asked the people and put them into the loop of the developments and bring together the care workers, the seniors and the developers, then we can create solutions which can stay sustainable at the end. And uh, that is where we could prove acceptance for such a fall prevention trainer, which is actually then the pepper robot, uh, that works. And uh, there was also a situation in a German care home over the Christmas time, because those elderly, they love to sing together. Mm. But uh, it was prohibited uh, because of the quarantine regulations. And uh, then we uh, implemented together with them uh, from the distance, some uh, uh, songs into the pepper, and the pepper provides those songs. And then uh, inside the ward, the facility, the people could sing together with the pepper. It's not like singing together with the social care worker, but at least they had, have had some fun. But there are also uh, shortcomings still, because uh, we also uh, try to integrate our technology into the work process of the caregivers. And then we had to learn that some of the caregivers, especially the older ones, which are not so familiar with the technology, were not so uh, delighted to put that technology device into their work. But the younger care workers, social care workers uh, could do that very well. So we also have to think about education. Education, uh, uh, for example, in our field, uh, in the care education, at least in Germany, digitalization and even not robotics plays any role for the time being. So such aspects to take the human workers uh, with that life learning process to use the technology are of utmost importance. So there are several opportunities, but we have to put it into the right way and to take the humans with us. And that's not only in the elderly care, I think it's also in industrial production where older workers are not so familiar with those artificial intelligence. We always have to take the humans with us. And mm -hmm. that is then lifelong learning and what the colleague has said with the digital uh, experiences and capacities. That's very, very important, I would yeah. say. That, that's a, a wonderful story. The corona pandemic has created a situation where it's very, very difficult uh, for people um, who are living in elderly homes because they're very isolated. And um, 
this, this is a, a somewhat unexpected example, I think, where technology actually plays a, a role in, in not only assisting work, but maybe also lending some sort of human touch, right? Which sounds a little bit ironic, given that we're, we're talking about uh, Peppercorn, which is, of course, a robot, not uh, not human. Um, um, let, let me pick up on, on your, um, your comment that um, education of workers is very important because um, as, as we are approaching the digital transformation, um, a lot of new skills are necessary. Um, people will be perhaps be doing different work. They, they might not become obsolete. I think that's um, uh, that's something that um, um, comes out in, in your comments today, um, but different skills are required. So what, what kind of skills are necessary? Um, what kind of education are we talking about? Where, where do we start? Do we start with uh, workers, for example, who already work in elderly care should be start at, at a much younger level, some sort of general education at university or maybe even, even school level um, to prepare people for working in, in a digitalized environment? I would say as early as possible. But uh, the younger people are used to use this technology from their beginning of their lives. Uh, it is the transformation process now to catch up also the elderly or uh, mid-aged people uh, and this is then about lifelong learning and uh, this is a very very important aspect because otherwise if we cannot take those human with us what shall they do yeah that's yeah. very interesting um with all the the research networks, there's there's a very interesting component in that um, we have um, cooperations between um, German organizations and Japanese organizations and German and Japanese participants. You do research in both countries. Um, now with us today is also um, Professor uh, Yasuyuki Taki of Tohoku University. Um, and and let me um, pick up of uh, on the the issue of robots and elderly care. Um, and this may sound somewhat um, um, stereotypical. Um, I, I somehow have a notion in my head that um, it might be easier for people in Japan to maybe accept um, robots in elderly care as opposed to Germany. I might be completely wrong there. We, we did actually have a comment uh, by Mr. Vitus Lavsky from the AH, uh, AHK Japan office um, who said, warm hands versus cold hands in one of our past events concerning robotics, Japanese participants said they could uh, imagine be taken care of by robots. Um, I, I, I'm not sure whether there's actually a cultural issue. Are there, are there differences in Japan compared to Germany? What would you say from your experience? Thank you very much. Um, my name is Taki from Tohoku University. Well, I was uh, very lis and listening with great interest, and um, I believe um, that um, I don't think that there is that much difference between our countries. Well, but in Japan already, um, in at the nursing homes or um, um, at the music or recreation activities, um, they they're tends to be a use of robots. Well, robots do not replace people, but um, robots do appear in such activities. So I do think uh, Japanese are more used to the idea of robots. And um, different companies um, come up with different types of robots. And uh, for the elderly, I think uh, the, in Japan, there is a sense of familiarity towards robots, more so than in Germany. Now, um, I... I'm not that familiar about what the situation is like in Germany, but I think uh, that um, the Germans might think of robots more like a tool. And therefore, I think um, that if that is the case, um, especially at the nursing homes, um, deploying robots compared to the Japanese, the Germans might think that this is something more distant. Uh, but it's not the case, uh, though, uh, that um, robots are considered to replace people, but instead just assist uh, the nursing care workers. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I mean, having been involved in uh, care robotics uh, already since uh, more than 10 years in the sense that we brought a company called Cyberdyne, uh, which was a startup from Tsukuba University to uh, the Bochum, Bochum uh, Begebergmannshal Hospital. 
uh, I think uh, it was uh, really an eye opener for me at the time when we had our first press conference in, in Bochum and people started asking, you know, these things, uh, Cyberdyne, that sounds very, uh, you know, uh, science fiction or destructive and uh, will this robot exoskelet walk away with me or, you know, all these type of questions. But then after uh, the journalists or people saw that uh, the robot was walking with patients who had uh, back injuries or who had muscle muscle diseases. And so their mind changed totally. Yeah? And they saw how much, uh, uh, so to say, these uh, robots could do to improve the lives of, of such patients and actually bring uh, patients back to their normal life at least or improve their life uh, to uh, quite a great extent. And uh, as Ms. Ganta Richter has said, uh, I think it's very important to build trust. It took very long time to build this uh, trust between the two parties, but it's also very important to create success stories because once you have such a, such a success story, uh, other people will notice and will come uh, and join you in that endeavor. So I think all of these activities which are undertaken here are very good. And um, so we are uh, actually as NRW Global Business Japan or NRW Japan uh, involved with many startups, uh, be it in this uh, digital area of working for, for SMEs uh, and bringing them together with Fraunhofer Institutes or other institutions, uh, but also in the uh, health and uh, medical med tech area. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, the digital transformation is, of course, a challenge, but uh, on the other hand, it opens up opportunities like these today, yeah? meeting Dr. Wiching or uh, Professor Madea or uh, people across the continents and sharing information and so on. So this is a huge uh, jump forward uh, in communication, and uh, that's why we, we really think, and we had a great year last year in our business, yeah? So it's the, the, that you cannot travel is a huge impediment, but the interest is there and the opportunities are there. So I think that's really very positive uh, uh, for all of us. Thank you very much. What, what you said about the project, uh, which I think um, was um, brought to Germany about ten years ago, um, that that sounds that sounds to me like um, even if there are sort of reservations or maybe there there, there might be different values, um, sort of on, on a cultural level, um, or maybe it's just um, being used to different things. That if there's a um, a, a concrete um, benefit, a, a, a value added from the technology, then this is something that transferred, transfers actually very well um, you across have people, countries. People have certain preconceptions. Yeah? And Japanese, they grow up with, you know, manga, with robots and things like that, are much more familiar from their childhood with robots, Atom or whatever. I mean, you know, but uh, in Germany, you have a certain uh, technical uh, uh, reservedness towards techniques to in some uh, areas uh, and uh, but I think once the value the real value of this technology is visible yeah, be it in the uh, old uh, care uh, senior home or be it at the uh, workbench in the factory and so on then people you know they will just realize immediately this uh, great value that is being added to their work or their their life. Yeah. So it's it's really about technology transfer and being being able to to communicate that um, across borders. Um, maybe maybe I can go back to to Mr. Um, Sasaki um, now since you're also dealing um, a lot with Japanese businesses, um, um, but you're also engaged in the Medium project, uh, working on, uh, on on cooperation between Germany and Japan. Um, is there a, a winning formula for you? Uh, something that that um, supports um, cooperation and um, helps corporations or organizations cross borders engage in joint research um, or in joint projects such as yours? 
Well, you asked about a winning formula, um, but um, I think um, this might sound paradoxic, but um, still I think that there is no winning formula. We have to recognize that. Well, one thing we can say is you shouldn't give up. That's important, not to give up. And that might be considered as a winning formula to a certain extent. Um, because um, at my organization, yes, and we are working for this Saitama city, but um, we have been working with Bailin, um in uh, Germany for over 10 years. And, um, well, simply put, I think um, it's we were very fortunate to have a very good partner. And, and um, well, um, the fact that this time we're able to work with this very un um, outstanding university and um, in Germany you have a lot of clusters and cluster mechatonic and also uh, medical clusters. Um, so um, they have, there are these two clusters with which we're working in Germany. And, and also uh, the Chamber of Commerce is very active and um, the Nuremberg a chamber of commerce and other chambers of commerce are our partners and on the japanese and also we have the representative of Berlin, um state here in japan and the jet we were also working with jetro for more than a decade so this long relationship um, leads to different partners and building trust between different partners and i think uh, that um, and this is one of the winning formulas to continue to work together and build trust and this, I think it was what is so wonderful about all your research networks because you've been cooperating now for quite some time you've 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 crossed borders you've established trust between um all the the players involved um i i'm thinking actually because you you also have connections between different areas in uh, different regions in germany and in japan um do you think the the regions play a role are you looking for particular partners in, in particular parts of the other country For Samadea, I think I, I seem to recall that um, you are your partners are mainly located sort of in the the Kansai uh, region, and I th it, it sounds to me like there, there's um, there's such there's there's a little bit of complementarity between um, uh, the, the place where the the uh, THM is located and where your partners are located. Yeah, which is which is central has uh, here. Yeah, complementarities, uh, but, but also similarities. I would argue, um, both regions are very strong in uh, man manufacturing. Very and the companies uh, around here are very good at making things. Uh, so are the companies in uh, the Kansai region, which is I would say the, the heart of Monozukuri, uh, if I may say so. I mean, this is a bit sorry for being a bit simple here, but so the heart uh, of production. Yes, one, yeah. So the heart of production, uh, yeah, Monozukuri, and those are the two reasons we want to connect. However, we are not restricting ourselves. We are open uh, to other uh, partners from other parts of the country too. And in, in fact, uh, we have also been uh, working very well uh, with uh, um, people and partners from, from other parts of the uh, country, uh, especially here from, from the capital region. Yeah, excellent. Now, if I summarize what, what all of you said today, I, I, uh, I um, can get an interesting picture of what is ahead of us. Um, and, and you can elaborate um, maybe after that uh, more clearly. Um, but as I uh, take it, we, have, we are facing a uh, profound tr um, transition, um, maybe partly also to different business models, um, or at least to, for some. Um, Corporations, some firms. This is a uh, a, a model uh, for to, to guarantee their future. Um, but at the same time, I think as Mr. Sasaki mentioned at the beginning, it, um, new technology is also about assisting work. So there's perhaps a scale with different aspects and, and different models that are being implemented. Um, we, we've also learned today about the uh, very high value of international cooperation and sharing knowledge, transferring knowledge across borders. And um, I would assume this is also the one of the, the factors that contributed to the success of your networks, because you, uh, you share knowledge, you um, help um, um, 
different actors um, approach this transition at the workplace and uh, in the nature of work. Um, and we've also had interesting examples actually of concrete implementations um, for example, in the uh, the sector of, of elderly care. And the model that is emerging is not that um, the human hand, the, the warm hand is becoming unnecessary or is uh, becoming super, superfluous, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's a joint effort um, that's being assisted by technology, by robotics. Um, but maybe in, 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 in more ways than we might have thought of um, just a few years back. The um, example um, Dr. Wiching gave of, of Peppercun um, sort of um, being used to, to cheer up uh, people who are currently um, very isolated actually socially. Um, this is a very interesting aspect. Um, we have a few minutes left. Um, what is ahead of us? I think this is also very interesting. Um, what are you currently um, trying to pursue um, in the time ahead? Um, perhaps I can ask uh, each of the four research networks to, to briefly summarize um, what is down the road for you. Um, Mr. Madea, do you also want to start again? Um, Yes, thank you very much. Well, with the help of this project, um, for which we are very um, thankful, uh, we have uh, clearly laid out and defined uh, the way for subsequent uh, research activities, defined them with our partners. Uh, what we want to do is we want to conduct comparative uh, studies between uh, Germany and Japan, uh, focusing on uh, SMEs and the degree that the uh, digital transformation has already progressed. We're thinking about a two-step approach. First, uh, looking at uh, certain focus groups of select companies, uh, uh, learning from those uh, case studies, and uh, then following on with a uh, yeah, broader um, lar or large-scale service. And as a side remark here, I would like to return to one statement of the uh, um, of the, the, this first edition of the coffee talk here, um, when uh, one of your guests said, "Well, uh, we we are both countries are very good at technologies, uh, but where we can learn and improve is um, studying the application of technologies for business, meaning the commercial commercialization of technologies. That's what we're headed for, and that's what we want to study in our, our further research." And uh, frankly, what do we need to do so? Well, um, as we do not have a fixed team on board, well, we, we still need funding uh, to do this. Um, so anyone uh, open or willing to contribute here, you are very much uh, invited to join us in, in our efforts uh, and your help will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I uh, mentioned it at the onset. Um, you can find uh, the links uh, to all the research networks, to all the participants, our guests here today um, on our website under the event information. Um, I, all the networks are open um, to uh, for feedback, for participation, uh, to uh, think about further developments, further projects. Um, so please be very welcome to contact them. Um, Mr. Sasaki, uh, can I ask you what's ahead for the Medron project? Hi. Hi. Uh, so this yes. The Medron project has conducted the research for the last two years. Building on that research, we will work together with uh, the companies from Saitama, from Japan, and from Germany, we want to promote collaboration further and further. And future of work is the title of this campaign. That is the overarching concept of this project. So from Japan side, well, Japanese people tend to work for long hours. That is a long standing issue. So including that issue, we want to emulate how German people work and we would also like to utilize technology so that we can transform the way we work. That is the challenge on Japan side. Thank you very much. I think this is a wonderful prospect. Um, we're all looking forward to, to shorter working hours. Um, and I think if, if you compare, of course, the hours that we work today compared to 50 years ago or 100 years ago, it really has changed significantly. Um, so 
Um, this is actually a very, um, really something something important that has been achieved. Um, Ms. Gunter Richter, uh, what's ahead for, for Granite, for the, the research networks? Oh. Granite is uh, connecting people from different sectors and uh, what are we doing in the following months? We are going to strengthen our networks that we have established so far. So this means we will activate our uh, MOUs with Shinshu University and Kagawa University. And we will also intensify dialogue with the Smart City Initiative in Takamatsu, as well as with uh, Nagano IT Valley. Um, furthermore, of course, we are supporting manufacturers in Japan as well as in Germany to expand their business activities in, in the other country. Well, today's coffee talk is a kind of kickoff for Granite to restart its activities. We are planning to have um, a jointly organized uh, symposium with Shichu University on May 25th at the Japanese German Center in Berlin and of course also uh, online. And in October, we are planning a, a three days conference with partners from Europe and Japan in Kagawa Prefecture. Our midterm perspective is to expand the Granite Network and invite European partners to, um, to join us. We have the concept of Japan's new basic plan for STI in mind. And we, of course, as uh, Professor Madea already mentioned, we also build on further funding, not only from the German research ministry, but also from the new Horizon Europe fronts from, from European side. So that's the plan. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, um, all our viewers who are interested in your events, uh, as I mentioned, you can find all the links to the different research networks on our website and uh, on the website of the research networks, then you can find the uh, event information. Then, um, Professor Taki, last but not least, uh, what's ahead of the Padero project? So this is not all. So this project, indeed, Horizon 2020 is a big project between Germany and Japan. And as mentioned earlier, the elderly people's health, how to in increase the active longevity, healthy longevity is very important. So the lifestyles need to be changed in order to increase the healthy longevity. There are evidences that corroborate that. However, we have to think also about the familiarity, familiarity among elderly people to the digital technologies. By so doing, we believe that we can provide advices to the elderly people, individual um, elderly persons on their lifestyle using technologies. But in doing so, we will have to work together with robots so that we can provide both cold and warm hands to the elderly people. And that's how we want to increase the healthy longevity of the elderly people. And that is the ultimate goal of Padero project. We are trying to expand this work global. There was a quick question. Um, the uh, events mentioned by Granite, are they exclusive or open to all? I, I think I can safely say they're open to all. And did you welcome participation? OK, thank you they very are, much. Of course, we are happy to welcome your, your contact. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to all of you. We are at the end of our time. Um, I appreciate greatly that you made time today um, and gave us an insight into um, actually different aspects of the future of work, the future of the workplace, um, different aspects um, of economic and social life that um, are touched by new technologies. Um, as I said, check out our website for further information uh, on the projects. Um, I apologize again for the um, the problems we had with the uh, Japanese YouTube link. If you go to our websites, we pay, um, pass a uh, link there um, to a different um, transmission. So you can um, take a look at the video later on. Unfortunately, we had to, to switch to a different website there. Um, 
we have the coffee talk on um, usually on on the first Tuesday of each month. Um, next um, Tuesday in May, uh, May fourth is actually public holiday in Japan, uh, Greenery Day, which is quite lovely. Actually, it's a lovely season in Japan. Um, but uh, we have to uh, postpone our talk by one week. So we'll see um, next time on uh, May 11th instead to discuss um, the um, artificial intelligence and its role in learning um, memory and neurological uh, networks. Um, if you want to leave feedback uh, for us, there's a link on our website, which you can use um, afterwards. Also, please do check, check out our website and our social media channels for news and event information and the latest news on research and innovation from Germany and Japan. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for all of you to, uh, for participating today. And see you next time. Bye-bye.